I know you're in there, Bertie. I can hear you whistling. <clears throat> uh, who is that? Who's that? It's Jeeves. Oh. It's Cyril Fungi Phipps. Barmy? Steady on, Jeeves. Come on, quick. Come on, come on. Most extraordinary thing. I was talking to your man Jeeves a second ago. No, no, it was me. Well, he said he was Jeeves. No, it was me. I was pretending to be Jeeves. Oh, I see. Jolly good. Why? Oh, I'm well, I don't want my Aunt Dahlia to know that I'm here. I had a bit of a set too down at her place. No, no, don't answer it. I wasn't going to. No, you see, she'll be regretting it now. She'll be begging me to come back and sort things out. No, answer it. Uh, pretend to be Jeeves. How? Oh, just sort of say you're Jeeves. Right. Mr. Worcester's residence? Where is Mr. Worcester? He's not at home, sir. I'm Jeeves. What do you mean, you think not? Oh. Well, who was it? Jeeves. Oh. Where was he? Just round the corner. Uh, sent as an emissary, no doubt. Well, no, I'm sorry, but one can only do so much. What's an emissary? It's something that's sent. So what are you doing here, Barmy, anyway? Um, nothing really, just came in for a smoke. Hope you don't mind. No, smoke away, Barmy, smoke away. When you said you'd come in for a smoke. I can't smoke at the drones at the moment. It's Uffy Pross, you see. We've got to bet on how long we can go without smoking. My doctor says it's better for me anyway. Good morning, Mr. Fungi Phipps. Morning, Jeeves. Mr. Worcester. Morning, Jeeves. I'm just making some tea. Really, sir? Uh, perhaps I could be... No, 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 no. I may as well do it now that I've started. No, I've got quite used to looking after myself. It's surprising, is it not, uh, how much one can assimilate in a day? Mm. Now, Jeeves, it says here it's best to use soft water, but that after boiling it may again become hard. Well, I mean, that's ice, isn't it? And now, it says here that one, uh, yes, that's right, one teaspoonful per person and one for the pot. Well, I mean, what does the pot get one? If it'll allow me, sir. <clears throat> Cup of tea, Barmy? Love one. All right, Jeeves, get on with it. Sir? It is obvious to the meanest intelligence, Jeeves, that you have been dispatched here by my esteemed Aunt Dahlia to plead with me to come back to Brinkley. Same old emotional quagmire down there, I suppose. Yes. Tuppy grinding his teeth. Angela aloof. Uncle Tom off his feet. Madeline off her head. And Finknottle trembling at the thought of this prize giving. Well, I'm sorry, Jeeves, but Mrs. Travers will just have to sort this whole thing out herself this time. Very good, sir. I was, in fact, sent to try to persuade Monsieur Anatole to return, sir. Anatole the cook, Jeeves? Yes, sir. Well, not to persuade me back to Brinkley to restore peace and harmony to the inhabitants? Mrs. Travers made no mention of it, sir. <sighs> well, of all the nerve, Jeeves. And this is what they call gratitude, is it? I really couldn't say, sir. Well, I don't think I'm going too far, Jeeves, when I say that this just about takes the giddy biscuit very good, sir. Well, I shall return to Brinkley in Stanter, Jeeves, and give the whole bunch of them a good talking to, starting with that idiot tuppy. If you want to try the Turkish, they're in the silver box. Oh, right ho, Bertie. Toodle pip. Cheerio. Ah. Ah. You're not going out, are you? Well, I am, Wolfie. How can I help you? Well, I wanted to have a smoke. Ah, say no more of it. My house is your house. I've got this bet on with Barmy. No, see? no need to explain a thing. If you want to try the Turkish, they're in the silver box. Ah. Mm -hmm. 
Am I not somebody, Mr. Jeeves? Undoubtedly, Mr. Anato. Then why they are making against me like bad people? Hmm? Delicious velouté au fleur de courgette. Monsieur Anatole himself taught me to make it when he first stayed at our little hotel. Ah, but Madame has got so good of me many times over. Oh. <laughs> A little more, perhaps, for Mr. Jeeves. We have a duty to look after our ladies and gentlemen, Monsieur Anatole. Look after? Am I the nurse? Am I the Nancy for the kiddies? No, this is not kiddies. No, 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 no. Kiddies is nice. Kiddies is not stopping with the eats. Kiddies is not saying to us a chap, poof, we not like you no more. We not eat your combustibles. Since time immemorial, Monsieur Anatole, it has fallen to the Gallic races to bring civilization to the rude northerly provinces of their empire. Mm, it's true. Anatole is civilian. Anatole is nice. It hasn't always been easy. Sometimes it has seemed impossible. But... Up to the time she went to Cannes, Angela loved me. You'll admit that. Oh, indisputably. But when she came back, she was just looking for an excuse to get rid of me. No, 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 no. What would you want to get rid of you for? Well, obviously, during those two months, she's transferred her affections to some foul blister she's met out there. No, 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 no. Well, I'll tell you one thing, and you can take this as official. If ever I find this slimy snake in the grass, I propose to take him by his beastly neck, shake him till he froths, and then pull him inside out and make him swallow himself. All right? My dear Tuppy, during those two months on the Riviera, it so happens that Angela and I were practically inseparable. If there had been somebody nosing around, I should have spotted it in a second. I see. So... No mixed bathing and moonlight strolls? No, 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 no. Well, only with me. It was quite a joke at the hotel. But then I've always been devoted to Angela. Really? Oh, yes, yes. When we were kids, she used to call me her little sweetheart. Anatole. We have no more stopping with the eating, I think. <laughs> eh? <laughs> I get my bagage. Jeeves, I can never thank you sufficiently, never. You've saved my husband's digestion. What I want, Dahlia? I didn't know that your master was back, Jeeves. Has he no mercy? Jeeves. Suppose that you were strolling through the illimitable jungle and you happen to meet a tiger cub. The contingency is a remote one, sir. Well, never mind. Let us suppose it. Very good, sir. Let us now suppose that you biffed that tiger cub. And let us further suppose that word reached its mother that you've done so. Now, what would you expect the attitude of that mother to be? In the circumstances, I should anticipate a certain show of disapprobation, sir. <clears throat> yes, very good, Jeeves. Very well put. Now, let us suppose that recently there'd been some little uh, coolness between the tiger cub and the tigress. Well, I don't know, for a, for a day or two, perhaps, they'd not been on speaking terms. Now, do you think this would make any difference to the vim with which the latter would leap to the former's aid? No, sir. No? Ah, well, here then, in brief, is my plan. I will draw my cousin Angela to one side to a secluded spot, and I shall roast Tuppy properly. Uh, roast, sir? Uh, um... Disparage, knock, uh, decry, denounce. I shall be very terse about Tuppy, giving it as my opinion that in all the essentials he is more akin to a warthog than an ex-member of a fine old school. And what will ensue? What indeed, sir? Uh, no, geez, no, no, that was one of those, um, what's it questions. Rhetorical, sir? Right, yes. Now, hearing him attacked, my cousin Angela's heart will become as sick as mud. The maternal tigress in her will awaken. And no matter what differences they may have had, she will remember only that he is the man she loves and she will leap to his defence. And from there to falling into his arms is but a step. So, how do you react to that, Jeeves? <clears throat> the idea is an ingenious one, sir. Well, we Worcesters are ingenious. Noted for it. 
And if one thing gives us the pip, it's the sight of two loving hearts being estranged. I can readily appreciate it, sir. Now, I'm not speaking without knowledge of the form book, you know, on this one. I've tested this theory. Indeed, sir. Mm. Oh, yes. And it works. I was standing on Eden Rock in Antibes last month, and a girl I know slightly pointed to this fellow diving into the water and asked me if I didn't think that his legs were about the silliest looking pair of props ever issued to a human being. Well, I agreed that indeed they were, and for perhaps a couple of minutes, I was extraordinarily witty and satirical about this bird's underpinnings. And guess what happened next? I am agog to learn, sir. A cyclone is what happened next, Jeeves, emanating from this girl. She started on my own legs, saying that they weren't much to write home about, and then she moved on to dissect my manners, morals, intellect, general physique, and method of eating asparagus. By the time she'd finished, the best that could be said about poor old Bertram was that, so far as was known, he hadn't actually burnt down an orphanage. The most illuminating stories, eh? No, 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 Jeeves, Jeeves. <laughs> you haven't had the payoff yet. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. The structure of your tale deceived me for a moment into thinking that uh, it was over. No, no, no. The point is that she was actually engaged to this fellow with the legs. Now, they'd had some minor disagreement the night before, but there they were, the following night, dining together, their differences made up, and the love light once more in their eyes. And I expect much the same results with my cousin Angela. Mm, I look forward to it with lively anticipation, sir. Care for a saunter, Angela, old girl? Love to, Bertie, darling. Go on. Shh. Tom's listening to the news. I have much to say that's not for the public ear. Bertie, darling, this grass is awfully wet. It'll ruin my shoes. Well, put your feet on my lap. All right. You could tickle my ankles. Right. <clears throat> now, Angela, what about you and Tuppy? Is it true what I hear, that the wedding bells are not going to ring out? Yes. Definitely over, eh? Definitely. Well, if you want my opinion, it's a bit of goose for you, old girl. It's a mystery to me how you stood this gloss up for so long. Is that an animal in the bush over there, Bertie? It sort of rustled. Yeah, it's probably a weasel or something. No, taken all in all, this gloss up ranks very low down among the wines and spirits. Frightful oik. I always thought you were such friends. What, friends? No. No, 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 no. Absolutely not, no. no one was civil, of course, but uh, in addition to looking like one of those things that come out of hollow trees, uh, he's universally acknowledged to be a dumb brick of the first water. No soul, no conversation, nothing. Yes. Yes, you're quite right. Eh? It's so nice to talk to someone who takes a sensible view about this glossop. Well, I... He's conceited and opinionated. He drinks too much, eats too much, and I don't much like the colour of his hair. I'm going in. Uh, um... Goodbye, Bertie. So! Ah, tuppy old chap. So! I've uh, been here long? Long enough. And in about two seconds, I'm going to kick your spine up through the top of your head. Under uh, eye. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, I, I think I know what's on your mind, Tuppy. Um, if you were in those bushes during the conversation with the recent Angela... I was. You were. You were. Right. Good. Um, yes, well, we won't go into the ethics of the thing. Um, eavesdropping, some people might call it. A bit un-English, Tuppy. I think you must admit. I'm Scots. Really? I didn't know that. I'm going to kick you. Uh, now, now, look, now, look, Tuppy, Tuppy, it, it, it was a plan. What are you talking about? It, well, if... if, if if it wasn't a plan, why would I knock you to Angela? Because you're in love with her yourself. I rest my case. What? No! Someone stole her from me in Cannes. You told me yourself she was with you all the time and hardly spoke to anybody else. Uh, no, 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 Tommy, look, you, look, you've got this all wrong. And I can, uh, and I can prove it. Um, during that sojourn in Cannes, my affections were engaged elsewhere. What? My affections engaged elsewhere during that sojourn. Well, who was she? My dear Tuppy, does one bandy a woman's name? No oh, one does. If one doesn't want one's bloody head pulled off. Right, well, yes, right, yes. Well, obviously, this is a, uh, a special case. Madeline Bassett. You're in love with that weird gourd helpers Bassett? Well, I don't think you should call her a weird gourd helpers, Tuppy. 
odd in some of her views, perhaps. One does not quite see eye to eye with her in the matter of stars and bunny rabbits, but not a weird God help us. And you stick to it that you're in love with her? It is not 24 hours since she turned me down. Turned you down? Like a bedspread in this very garden. So you'll readily see that I can't be the chap, if any, who stole Angela from you in can. Well, because your affections were engaged elsewhere? During that sojourn. Oh, I see. All right, then. Sorry to have troubled you. Just you. What about the things Angela said? Well, she obviously spotted you in those bushes and was just talking to score off you. She adores you, Tuppy. She worships the ground you tread on. Bertie, if you should see Mr. Glossop, perhaps you would give him these. It's nearly six o'clock and he hasn't eaten a morsel since tea. Oh, I know. I'll put them down here. They'll be easier for him to reach. It's like leaving food out for a little animal, isn't it? Uh, Angela! How still and peaceful everything is. Jeeves, I have decided that Tuppy and Miss Angela will have to disentangle their own affairs. Today is the day for finally clearing up the whole gussy Miss Bassett imbroglio. Indeed, sir. Where we've been falling down in the past is in not keeping it to the forefront of our minds that in Gussy Fingnottle what we are dealing with is a poop. A sensitive plant might perhaps be a kinder description, sir. A poop, Jeeves. And what's more, a poop who drinks nothing stronger than orange juice. I was not aware of that, sir. Oh, yes, Jeeves, I've had it from his own lips. Whether from some hereditary taint or because he promised his mother he wouldn't, Gussie Fingnottle has never pushed so much as the simplest gin and tonic over the larynx. And he expects, this poop expects, Jeeves, under these conditions, to propose marriage to the girl he loves. Well, I mean, one, one hardly knows whether to smile or weep. What? You consider total abstinence to be a handicap in a gentleman wishing to make a proposal of marriage, sir? Oh, dash it, Jeeves, use your intelligence. Were it not for the juice of the grape and the grain, weddings would be a thing of the past. Proposals but a dim memory. Without it, Jeeves, we babble. Thank you, Jeeves. Only active measures promptly applied can prevent this poor poop fink nottle from babbling about newts again. Which is why I intend to secure a bottle of gin and lace his luncheon orange juice with it. Sir? I can't imagine why you sir, Jeeves. The plan I've put forward seems to me to be icily logical. I fail to see why it should attract any sirring. No, sir. Let us hear your objections, then, Jeeves. A certain amount of risk is inherent in your stratagem, sir. It is not always a simple matter to gauge the effect of alcohol on a subject previously unexposed to such stimulants. It can have distressing results in the case of parrots. Parrots? I'm thinking of an incident when I was in the service of the late Lord Brancaster, a gentleman who owned a parrot. One day it happened that the bird was lethargic, sir, and his lordship offered it a portion of seed cake steeped in the 84 port. Good egg. The bird bit his lordship on his thumb and sang part of a sea shanty. It then fell to the bottom of its cage and remained there for some considerable period of time with its legs in the air, unable to move. I merely mention this, sir. There's a flaw here, Jeeves. Do you know what it is? No, sir. Gussie isn't a parrot. True, sir, but... No more discussion, Jeeves. He's a poop. Very good, sir. <sighs> you noticed I said I was going to put this project through today, Jeeves? Why do you think I said today? <clears throat> because you feel that if it were done when tis done, then for well it were done quickly, sir? Partly, Jeeves, yes, partly. 
But the chief reason is that today is the day of the prize giving at Market Snodsbury Grammar School. We shall, by lacing the juice, not only embolden him to propose to Miss Bassett, but also put him so into shape that he will hold that Market Snodsbury audience spellbound. I see, sir. Seems to be happy enough, doesn't he? Indeed, sir. The engagement appears to have lifted his spirits quite considerably. Engagement? You're not aware that uh, Mr. Finknock had proposed to Miss Bassett this afternoon and was accepted, sir? Well, 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 Jeeves. Yes, sir. You see how bright I was? Indeed, sir. Yes, this must be rather an eye-opener for you, Jeeves, watch me handling this case. Right. Luckily, sir, I found right. an opportunity to add half a bottle of ardent spirit to his luncheon orange juice. Lords, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Jeeves. So did I, Jeeves. Now, this year, we are all delighted to welcome, as our guest for the afternoon, Mr. Fitzwattle. Think Nottle! <laughs> I should say, think Nottle. Well, of course you should, you silly ass! <laughs> well, all right, get on with it. We are all happy, as I say, uh, to welcome uh, Mr. Think Nottle, <laughs> who has kindly consented to present the prizes. Now, I'm sure Mr. Finknottle's name is familiar to us all. Well, not to you. You didn't seem to know it's a dashed well, what? Uh, uh. <laughs> I do. Push off. Speech. Speech. Yay! Boys! No, oh, I mean, uh, ladies and gentlemen and boys. It's a beautiful world, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, lords and, and things. I mean, the, the, the sky is blue, the birds are singing, there's optimism everywhere. And why not, girls and ladies? I should like you all to be upstanding and give three cheers for this beautiful world. Up you get. Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Down. Now, anybody who says this isn't a beautiful world doesn't know what they're talking about. You see, if there's one thing in the world I can't stand, it's a pessimist. See, a pessimist is a man who... Why, hello, Bertie. I didn't know you were here. Now, there's an instance of what I mean. Uh, ladies and... what's it? Take a good look at that object sitting there at the back. Uh, morning coat, trousers is worn, mouldy rose in button, only can't miss him. I despise that man, women and children. <coughs> and shall I tell you why? Eh? Because he... Uh, uh, I think, uh, Mr. Fignottle, as, uh, as time is getting on, I think perhaps we ought to uh, commence the prizes. Oh, it's you. The surprises. yes, right home. Might as well be shoving along with it. What, what's this one? The spelling and Dictation, P.K. Purvis. Spelling and Dictation, P.K. Purvis. Forward, P.K. Purvis. Oh, you P.K. 
cave puppets? Yes, sir. It's a beautiful world, P.K. Purvis. Yes, sir. Ah, you've noticed it, have you? Good. You married by any chance? No, sir. Get married, P.K. Purvis. It's the only life. Yes, sir. Good boy. Right, Headmaster, what's the next one? G.G. G. Simmons, scripture knowledge. G.G. G. Simmons. Scripture knowledge. So, you've won the Scripture Knowledge Prize, have you, G. G. Simmons? So, yes, sir. Yes. You looked as a sort of little tick who would. And yet, how are we to know that you came by it in an open and above-board manner? I can assure you, Mr. Fignottle, every care was taken to ensure a correct marking. Well, if you say so. All right, G.G. Simmons, take your prize. Sir, thank you, sir. But let me tell you, there's nothing to stick on sight about in winning a prize for scripture knowledge. Bertie Worcester won a scripture knowledge prize, but of course Bertie frankly cheated. He succeeded in scrounging that scripture knowledge prize over the heads of better men by means of some of the rawest and most brazen swindling methods, even at a school where such things were the norm. You will not be surprised to learn, Jeeves, that Madeline and Gussie are no longer engaged after the fiasco of the prize-giving. Was there much more after I left? No, sir. Uh, Mr. Finknottle's inflamed cerebral condition brought about an early closure. Mm. He returned to the theme of Master G. G. Simmons and his scripture knowledge prize, hinting at systematic cheating on an impressive scale. He even went so far as to suggest that Master Simmons is well known to the police. Oh, golly. Yes, sir. Um... Not our finest hour, Jeeves. No, sir. Door, Jeeves? Yes, sir. That may be Mr. Fingnottle now. Oh, it's not you. Hello, Tuppy. Mr. Glossop. If you'll excuse me, sir. You remember what I swore I'd do to the chap who stole Angela from me? Well, uh, as nearly as I can recall, you were going to pull him inside out. And make him swallow himself, correct. Well, the programme holds good for the newt bloke. The newt bloke? Gussie. The serpent think not. But Gussie loves Madeline Bassett. Oh, you can't all love this blasted Bassett. It astonishes me how anybody could love her. No, think not loves Angela and she loves him. Oh, that is absurd. Absurd, is it? Well, then perhaps you'll kindly explain to me how she happens to be engaged to him. Engaged? Tuppy, you could knock me down with an F. There must be some mistake. There is. The snake Fink Nottles just made it. Ah, there you are. Where are all the staff tonight, you know? They've gone over to the staff dance at Kingham Manor. Appears that you've gone and got engaged to the Gussie. Quite right. We're in love. Oh, come now, Angela. Gussie's... Gussie's a splendid chap in many ways. If, if you've got a sick newt on your hands, well, Gussie's just the fellow to tell you what to do until the doctor comes. But honestly, old thing, you could fling bricks by the half hour in England's most densely populated districts without hitting one girl willing to become Mrs. Finknottle without a general anaesthetic. Well, I thought it would be fun. Well, I'm surprised at you, young Angela. No wonder they say, oh, woman, woman. Who do? Well, chaps, mostly. You know you're potty about Tuppy. For goodness sake, Bertie, go away and boil your head. Well, now, Angela, if you'll permit me to observe. No. Very well, then. I shall say no more. Just... 
Tinkety-tonk. I say, Jeeves, do you know what's happened? Mr. Finknottle has got himself engaged to my cousin Angela. Gentlemen who are discarded by one young lady are apt to attach themselves without delay to another's, eh? It is what is known as a gesture. My Uncle George... Oh, never mind your Uncle George, Jeeves. No, sir. Save him for the long winter evenings, eh? Just as you say, sir. We must concentrate on rescuing Gussie. Go forth and scour the neighbourhood. I don't think that will be necessary, sir. Mr. Finknottle is here. <clears throat> Mr. Finknottle, sir? Gussie? Is that door locked? Yes, sir. Let me in, blast you! Who's on this door? Jesus, you're here! What's going on? Jesus, you're here! Are you in there? What do you think you're doing? Listen, if you don't open up, I'm gonna jolly well break this door down! What's up? What's up? Why was that door locked? Is one to have no privacy, Glossop? I instructed Jeeves to shut the door because I was about to disrobe. There, you see? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jeeves. But I heard his snaky little voice. Well, I intend to search this room from end to end. And if he is here, you better say goodbye to him quickly and order your lilies. What's in this cupboard? Just clothes. The usual wardrobe of an English gentleman. You're lying. Ha. 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 Give me a drink. Anything, so long as it's strong. Approach Bertram along those lines, Aunt Dahlia, and you catch him at his best. Attila. That's the name, Attila the Hunt. Eh? I've been trying to think all through dinner what it was you reminded me of. Oh, now look, after everything Angela I've done... Angela tells me she's going to get engaged to this spink bottle. Well, temporarily, yes. So there it is. My only daughter, for whom I had dreamed of a wonderful golden future, is going to marry an inebriated newt fancier. Well, aunt of my heart, yes, I can't but agree that things are not too oojar come spiff at the moment. Yes, Jeeves? <clears throat> a note for you, sir. From whom, Jeeves? From Miss Bassett, sir. What does Madeline Bassett want to write to me for? Open the damn thing and see. Stop that. You don't understand. Madeline Bassett says she's going to marry me. Well, I hope it keeps fine for both of you. I hope you won't take it amiss, sir, but I've been giving some attention to what might be called the amatory entanglements at Brinkley. It seems to me that drastic measures may be called for. Oh, drastic away, Jeeves. The prospect of being united for life with a woman who talks about... Little baby bunnies fills me with an unnamed dread. Supposing, sir, that in the middle of the night, the fire alarm bell were to ring. Oh, not the fire alarm thing again, Jeeves. Yes, sir. As I see it, sir, the occupants of the house would suppose that a conflagration had broken out. Well, possibly, Jeeves. Possibly. Whereupon, if I'm not mistaken, Mr Glossop would hasten to save Miss Angela while Mr. Finknottle would perform the same office for Miss Bassett. Huh? This is based on psychology, is it, Jeeves? Yes, sir. It is thought to be the instinct of everyone, upon the alarm of fire, to save the object dearest to them. 
It seems to me there's a grave danger of seeing Toppy come out carrying a steak and kidney pie. But resume, Jeeves, resume. Well, sir, the relations between the two couples could scarcely continue distant after such an occurrence. Mm, well, you may be right. I just feel that there's great possibility for a slip-up here, Jeeves. However, I'm not in a position to cavil at even a hundred to one shot. At what hour would you suggest bonging the bell? Not before midnight, sir. Hmm. Shall I bong or will you? I think it would be better coming from you, sir. Saying, sir, look around you. See for yourself. Your scheme has proved a bust. <clears throat> Certainly it would appear that matters have not arranged themselves quite as we had anticipated, sir. We, Jeeves? <clears throat> as I had anticipated, sir. Oh, I'm not blaming you, Jeeves, but after this, well, forgive me if I hurt your feelings, uh, Jeeves. Certainly, sir. <clears throat> if you would pardon me for interrupting you, I fancy Mrs. Travers is endeavouring to attract your attention. Just step this way a moment, Attila, dear. If you don't mind. What, oh, Auntie? Well, Bertie, dear. Here we all are. Well, quite. It was you, dear child, who rang the fire bell, was it not? Um, I did sort of ring it, yes. Any particular reason? I mean, did you want something, or was it just a whim? Uh, I thought there was a fire. What gave you that impression, darling? Tell Auntie Dahlia. <laughs> oh, I thought I saw flames. Um, the front door's shut. Somebody must have shut it behind them and it's locked. Then try another door. They're all locked. We could ring the doorbell. And who would you expect to answer it, dear? The servants have all gone to the dance at Kingham. And Mr Seppings no doubt took the key of the back door with him. We can't stop out here all blasted night, blast it. If Seppings has taken the back door key, why doesn't one of us take one of the cars, drive over to Kingham and get it from him? That's the first sensible suggestion I've heard all day. It's locked! That's locked too. Well, that's absolutely wonderful. They're all locked! <coughs> Did you cough, Jeeves? Yes, madam. Is it influenza, or have you got an idea? <coughs> well, forgive me, madam, but it did occur to me that perhaps one of the gentlemen might be disposed to bicycle to Kingham Manor and procure the back door key from Mr. Seppings. Jeeves, you are wonderful. Thank you, madam. Attila! <coughs> Well, I haven't ridden for years. Well, you'll soon get the knack. Once you've taken a toss or two. <laughs> but it's miles to Kingham. Nine miles. And nine miles back? And nine miles back. But, but, but it's dark. What if I barge into something? I'll come a frightful cropper. Good. <sighs> Very well, Aunt. So be it.
it is quite urgent, actually. I, I can try and telephone him with the telephone. Uh, uh, yes, if you would. Why, Mr. Worcester, sir? Uh, Seppings, I need the key of the back door. Oh, well, this is I left it with Mr. Jeeves. Jeeves? He said he wanted to walk in the garden before retiring for the night. He was going to leave it on the kitchen window sill for me. <laughs> Mr. Worcester? Jeeves. House seems positively awash with joy and laughter. It's gratifying, isn't it, sir? Oh, come now, Jeeves. I fear I've not been entirely frank with you regarding the fire bell, sir. I never anticipated that it would of itself produce the desired results. I'd intended it merely as a preliminary to what I might call the main business of the evening. You gibber, Jeeves. <sighs> Explain yourself. <sighs> It occurred to me that were you, sir, to be established as the person responsible for the ladies and gentlemen being forced to spend the night in the garden, everybody would take so strong a dislike to you that in this common antipathy they would sooner or later come together. And such proved to be the case. After your departure on the bicycle, the various estranged parties agreed so heartily in their abuse of you that the ice was broken. And when I informed the ladies and gentlemen that I had found the key, and it was borne in on them that you were having that long ride for nothing, and there was a notable lessening of tension. Oh, there was, was there? Of course, <clears throat> the rain was a bonus. Of course. As soon as the storm began, their animosity vanished completely. <clears throat> Mr. Glossop and Miss Angela are once more betrothed, so... Oh? And what about Miss Bassett? Do I still have to marry her? Oh, no, sir. Miss Bassett is once more safely affianced to Mr. Finknottle. Phew! Well, praise be, Jeeves. Indeed, sir. Although, if you'll forgive me for saying so, your methods are a little on the rough side. Well, sir, <coughs> one cannot make an omelette without breaking eggs. I say, an omelette? Um, do you think you could get me one? Certainly, sir. Perhaps with a little half-bot of something? Undoubtedly, sir. Right-ho, Jeeves. <laughs> <laughs> 